Hello and welcome back to another guide video to Warhammer 40k. My name is Saiken and today we're going to take a look at all of the equipment. I will do a mixture of talking through general equipment as well as going through very specific items that might be of relevance for you. We're covering everything from armor at the beginning then uh, over to weapons to uh, the uh, war gear as the final notion and we're going to go through what uh, can make your game a little bit easier plus what is going to work in certain compositions. So without further ado let's jump right into it. And we are starting with armor. For starters, there are two different sets of armor in the game. Power armor, which is the more mobile version, and Terminator armor, which is simply the uh, stronger version. Um, I have every single item in the game, so you can see there are 39 power armors and 26 um, Terminator armors. Um, almost all of the classes, short of uh, the um, Purgator and the Interceptor, can uh, get access to Terminator armor. And generally speaking, Terminator armor has more advantages than disadvantages. Um, each armor comes with different loadouts, and I just wanted to um, give you a couple of highlights for what I think are valuable armors. So there are a couple of armors in both the Terminator as well as uh, the Power Armor tier, which uh, will give you grenade ammo and extra grenades. Uh, for the Power Armor, it is an obvious choice for Purgator or Purifier. Um, for the um, Terminator Armor, it can be a choice in stun teams in particular or in affliction-based teams where you want to give a character kind of a ranged attack. As an example, this, uh, this type of armor can work very well on a paladin that is carrying a massive shield uh, because they don't have a ranged attack. You give them uh, basically three uh, grenades um, with very, very large areas to work with. So that is good. You should uh, uh, watch out for it, and I would recommend using it. Second, uh, uh, equally or even better recommendation would be passive war gear. There are quite a few uh, armors, both in the Terminator space and in the uh, power armor space that give extra uh, passive equipment slots. The way that I would value those is uh, you should uh, think about what type of passive equipment you would want to put in there and then decide if that, uh, that is valuable enough for you. Typically, uh, as passive uh, war gear, you could assume six will points, 50% focus, 50% resistance, um, extra armor, three extra armor, um, permanent three extra armor, or any form of crit chance, 35% um, for range, 30% for melee, or four extra crit damage. So that's kind of the baseline of how valuable passive war gear can be. Clearly, it depends on the build that you're running, but it is one of the most valuable um, portions in the game. There are a lot of um, armors that do have willpower, focus, and resistance in any shape or capacity. I'm not going to go through those. Uh, the next one that I would want to highlight is a specific uh, one that only exists on one Terminator armor suit, which is the Morning Plate, where there is the Penitent um, effect. Penitent allows you to cast will points, uh, cast after you uh, spend all of your will points you cast with your hit points instead and that's potentially one of the best abilities in the entire game so if you ever get your hands on the morning plate it is the terminator armor that um, will um, uh, transform any of uh, the terminator armor wearing characters in an absolute into an absolute beast because um, you don't need to stack will points on that character. I personally use it on Justicars so that they can always overcharge uh, their um, uh, 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 another chapter and uh, never run out of uh, willpower de, uh, de facto. Good. So uh, those are the important um, armor um, items. There's one more on the power armor side that I wanted to highlight. Power armor is very much moving uh, in analogy, analogy uh, to the Terminator armor. However, power armor does have sometimes AP 
on it, uh, such as Cantus Vembrans, and I think there is a tier 2 armor um, as well that does have that. The point with extra AP is, in my uh, perspective, very, very uh, simple. Extra AP uh, will give you 4 instead of 3 actions to start with, so I value that quite highly, specifically for DPS uh, characters. It needs to be trade -off, um, traded off with the extra um, passive uh, equipment slot, but that is a good, even excellent option for you. Uh, one thing that you shouldn't uh, sleep on for uh, some of the characters that require more positioning, uh, specifically ranged characters that need to deal with uh, cover, is movement speed. Several armors offer one to up to three movement speed, and that really works out very well, because if you look at five movement speed as the base, if you're running with eight movement speed and even get a biomancy to put it up to 10 movement speed effectively means you spend uh, half the amount uh, of uh, action points uh, to move. So for those uh, characters that cannot teleport, this is a uh, important step that I would be looking up for as well. All right, moving on to weapons. And we're starting with melee weapons uh, for uh, that purpose. You can see just how many weapons exist in the game. It's a relatively even split between 13 and 16 weapons in all of uh, the categories. And they uh, typically have a one-third, one-third, one-third split between tier 1, tier 2, tier 3. Uh, granted, some of these here are the early backing uh, bonus uh, uh, weapons, so they aren't really uh, lootable weapons. So. Generally speaking, uh, uh, let's start with the general concept of what makes uh, weapons great and what uh, to look out for. Uh, weapons always uh, complement the build and you should think about what the weapon is supposed to be doing. Generally speaking, swords are the defensive version of melee weapons, as in melee defense blocking. Halberds are generally speaking the AoE attacking version, uh, as in Bladestorm. Falcons, generally speaking, are the highest crit weapons. Hammers, generally speaking, either have pushback or uh, the strongest uh, effects on force strike. Warding states, generally speaking, are the weakest uh, in terms of damage, but oftentimes do have uh, the best passive effects, such as willpower or uh, Aegis shield. And Arcathium, in uh, particular, are weapons for the um, Apothecary. Uh, the Crocius Arcanum um, is, uh, um, uh, is a weapon for the um, Chaplain is the word that I was looking for. It escaped me for a moment. Uh, they are chaplain-only weapons. Okay, so let's take a look at, uh, with that out of uh, the way, which weapon should you use? It depends on what you can get your hands on. I will start with a couple of general uh, themes of uh, what you should look for in weapons, and then we're looking more specifically uh, for unique weapons that, um, in my perspective, fit very uh, specific builds. So. Uh, the first um, I, thing that I would look for in most of the weapons is the base damage, simply because that determines how much damage you are going to deal. And that is not only for melee weapons, that goes for ranged weapons just as much, um, because that will be your base that you are going to work um, off of. Secondly, um, many of the weapons will have a crit. Uh, or extra crit uh, rating uh, stat that is generally appreciated for damage dealers and is generally speaking less important for any non-damage dealers. In most of the comps that you're running, you will have one to two damage dealers. Therefore, you should have the weapons on them. Uh, the other characters are not automatically support, but it is not as prevalent or as important that they do have a high crit uh, range. Thirdly, almost all of the weapons do have a force strike um, effect. Many of them will simply have a fixed extra damage. Some of them will add crit chance. Some of them will do add unique abilities such as uh, stun damage on uh, the force uh, strike. And you should really uh, very carefully consider what the weapon is trying to do and if it fits into your build. We'll come to that in a second when I talk about uh, unique weapons that are specific uh, and that might define certain builds. So that's the core ba uh, base. If I can give you a tip, go for the weapon primarily that has the highest uh, base damage. 
then look for the force strike and unless your character is continuously force striking then you can kind of calculate that into the um, damage uh, some weapons have a low base damage but a very very high force strike uh, rating and if you do have a character that is anyways only force striking and you're doing nothing else with that character you might as well combine both of the values so pri primarily uh, look for damage then force strike and then crit in this order um, unless you have a damage dealer that is very reliant on crit so that is the general concept secondly i would uh, rather go for high damage uh, weapons than for any uh, specific secondary effect in other words if you do have a build in mind uh, where your character uh, should be a frontline tank and you want uh, them to attack with halberds just have that extra blade uh, storm chance and then you're finding a better hammer uh, for that character that just deals more damage by all means i would urge you to go for the better weapon the point of this game is oftentimes um, uh, you will not see those secondary effects come into play as often as you might think that they are uh, necessary good now let's move on to um, a couple of outstanding items we're starting category by category for the uh, swords uh, one of the items that i want to highlight um, is a defensive one the stoic blade which is a very solid damaging weapon seven uh, together with four strike has a good crit rating but here's uh, the kicker of uh, this sword it has twice around an auto parry so if you're building a tank uh, that is potentially the quote-unquote most uh, tanky weapon that uh, that uh, you can uh, go through um, there are a couple of other good blades uh, that have uh, the same parry but none of it is doing it as well as the stoic blade uh, the uh, uh, second item from a halberd perspective that I want to uh, highlight uh, is, there we go, Endbringer. Um, easily overlooked uh, uh, if you are uh, just going by the numbers because a uh, tier 2 weapon, but it does have an auto executioner in here. If you run a stun team, this weapon is an absolute beast because it gives you plus 2 AP uh, once a turn when you are the executor so it is an ultra strong donor for AP if you combine that with characters that do have uh, the ability for an extra auto trigger that's even 4 AP per turn another one that I want to highlight from the halberd uh, tree is pale pale does have the force um, ability to strike an area of three which is aoe um, aoe uh, striking means that also all of the uh, effects that are normally triggered with your weapon will trigger for every uh, every single one so stun biomancy will trigger to all of them uh, the only thing that typically doesn't happen in aoe is that crit damage is not converted uh, to aoe but pale has a very high base damage and if you uh, use that uh, for an aoe you're typically already going to deal an extraordinarily high amount of damage for the falcons there are a couple of uh, the ones that i would uh, highlight one is sorrow again tier 2 weapon that you might overlook uh, which has the ability auto righteous whenever character crits uh, there is a 50 percent chance to gain one ap in the end game you can have an interceptor with a sanctic shard tier 3 um, to have twice a turn an extra ap with it granted though the weapon itself doesn't have as much crit damage as other weapons and is only quote unquote coming in at the combined eight uh, mm, uh, force strike damage however two extra attacks sometimes can be worth it and it's definitely an overall good uh, weapon another excellent weapon that i want to highlight in the falcons tier is Ogin's Edict. There are a couple of lower versions of that as well, but that's the highest level version, which comes in with a whooping 75% crit, uh, just based on that weapon with the force uh, strikes. So if you are a crit fisher, this is your uh, sure way of getting 100% uh, percent, uh, crit. Moving on to Demon Hammers, couple of interesting Demon Hammers here. Number one, Blessing of Faith. Um, which is a second level weapon it has the force strike effect to stun 
then stun on top of it and if you don't push uh, uh, don't want to do no sh uh, knockback you can just use that as a stunning weapon uh, strike uh, automatically do deals one as a base two on top one on top uh, that's four if you are a paladin five uh, without any biomancies if you put iron arm biomancy on top of it it's eight so this is a very very single uh, strong single target stun weapon that i would highly highly recommend to give it a uh, turn the second one that i personally uh, like is uh, ligator's grip um, which uh, has the same auto righteousness uh, in here so it the hammers in this game are just generally fantastic um, has six points uh, of damage three crit on top of it so comes in at nine uh, if you're critting and then if you're critting there is a good chance that you gain ap so it's a great weapon um, one of the highest damaging weapons if you run a crit build is final justice this is one of those weapons that has a uh, low normal damage but uh, with four strike comes to six damage and then has a whooping four crit damage on top of it so that's 10 damage with that weapon does have 20 percent crit chance and has the same auto righteous so it's the upgraded version of legato's grip final justice and then uh, we're moving on to yet another honorable mention potentially the strongest weapon in the game uh, warbreaker uh, which is very similar uh, to the pale lands uh, but it uh, creates a four strike effect in an area of four instead of three six uh, base uh, damage on top of its silence and on top of that three crit damage make warbreaker an absolute beast uh, and i retract my previous statements aoe can crit but um, the psi cannons I aoe cannot crit so for melee it definitely can crit so uh, moving on to warding staffs just a, a couple of um, important uh, ones here that i wanted to highlight rod of the ancients is an interesting one gives you uh, two armor on your aegis shield and 100 percent trigger for those characters that don't have a lot of focus, it is a sure way of just getting more um, tankiness, typically four. Uh, some characters that do have extra shield can even get six or eight uh, armor out of it. So that's a great um, passive item. Fortitude um, as an item that is just all around good, has a chance trigger Aegis shield, has a resistance on top of it. Um, so if you do have a high, um, uh, high focus this can go up to 100 percent eagles and on top of it you're getting 40 percent resistances which is just crazy and then finally a staff of uh, supremacy which is the only staff that gives you uh, max willpower and willpower is important so four willpower is just fantastic on top of it it has a good chance of triggering an eagles as for the um, croziers a couple of them that i want to highlight uh, not going into detail here chaplain uh, one is the hammer of the righteous uh, chaplain doesn't have any will point costs uh, to maintain lithany is good for longer term missions and the second uh, one would be the manifest word for any stun group um, whenever he executes uh, whenever this unit executes it gains plus two ap he can get that up to twice a turn so the auto executioner is just absolutely fantastic as for the narcothium that um, is a very simple uh, list actually uh, because um, unless you're building a very specific melee apothecary which is theoretically possible uh, most of them aren't really doing much for you the best for a pure melee um, apothecary would be potentially vindication in glory uh, which if you're fighting against space marines that would be eight points of damage then 50 percent crit chance and since uh, the melee apothecary has three uh, crit damage we're um, in their tree we're looking at kind of 11 points of uh, damage with uh, against space marines so that i can see why you would want to build it but the best ones here in my uh, in my um, perspective are basically uh, level two and level one uh, because the biomancy duration only comes with life giver uh, and with a thomas salve both of them are the ones that you should be looking out for since the apothecary oftentimes just does that in terms of ranged weapons very uh, similar uh, just a couple of uh, things to highlight here there are, I would say, three general tiers. I'm just using Storm Bolters 
and not going through all of uh, the the others uh, but there are three th uh, specific ones that you might want uh, to look out for number one i would say is the max uh, mm, ammunition type of weapons eternal wrath is by far across all of the weapons the one with the most ammunition you can stack up to 13 ammo and with that uh, mm, use arcane weapon for instance or uh, just have a support fire built uh, with an uh, intercept that uh, can shoot up to uh, th uh, two times per round and never really need to reload. So high uh, ammo weapons can be complementary for certain uh, builds that are relevant. The second type of weapon that I would highlight are those that have exceptional crit abilities. Some of uh, them uh, do. I'll uh, take uh, one in particular that, uh, that I like. Uh, of the tier 3 bolters, Apostas Wo, uh, which is the only bolter that allows you to do precision targeting without having precision targeting. So if you want to crit, this bolter, for instance, has a 50% uh, build, 65% uh, build in crit for psi attacks. So it's very uh, uh, simple to precision uh, target with that weapon. And there are other weapons alike uh, where the um, Psy Bolt uh, will do something very, very uh, specific. Some will do bleeding, some will do pinning, uh, some will do hobbling or immobilization. Uh, so that in itself uh, is something to look out for. And then the third category uh, of, I would say, specific weapons that I want to highlight are those with ultra high range. Uh, they are always exceptional weapons. Traitors do, for instance, is the exception to the storm bolters. Um, as range can be quite helpful. I would, for instance, use this on a support fire uh, build of an immobile character or into an overwatch uh, build because 17 range is just crazy. It is very good for pure ranged combinations. And that's it. That's uh, what I had with weapons. Let's move shortly on to uh, the war gear and uh, give that a look. Um, in terms of grenades, just wanting to highlight a few here. Grenades generally tend to work very well on specialized characters uh, that get multiple uses out of them. So Purgator, Purifier, or if you do have an, an armor that allows to do that. The frag grenade uh, from start to end of the game is decent. Um, seven points of damage at the end um, in a very good uh, um, area. Plus knockback on top of it can kill targets by just pushing them off. So I would uh, recommend you to look into that. The crack grenade, um, equally interesting later in the game. Instead of knockback, does have uh, armor break. And when you have armor targets, it deals an effective eight points of damage. So I value that. Uh, relatively highly it's it's a, a decent grenade the next one that i would highlight to you is the uh, psychotro grenade which is a crowd control grenade where everybody not only takes damage but uh, gets crazed and, and crazed is a nice uh, debuff where they have a 50 percent chance of attacking their own characters so it's quite good in uh, compositions that might lick damage or if you're finding yourself needing to crowd control then this grenade will do it and finally the str item in grenades is the imperial and brain mine which by itself if you don't enlarge the area isn't that exciting but if you enlarge the area uh, the uh, 0.5 can go up to 3.5 or 4 and then the five stun all of a sudden become very very real so in stun uh, teams this grenade by itself can cause a lot of problems moving on to uh, the servitor skulls um, one that is always usable is the Extractor Servicer Skull. I personally like it. It's a great skull. Um, another one that I uh, found helpful in the right combinations is the Seeker Skull. Uh, it kind of suggests that you do that uh, when you're not seeing the enemy, but in reality, vulnerability um, as a no AP um, use uh, with plus two damage to all um, attacks is quite potent. So if you put that onto your Apothecary, you can simply dish out more damage with uh, your team. Medikai Skull, uh, the main healing item, I would uh, say um, if you are struggling, this is a very, very simple pick to, uh, to pick up. Um, uh, rivaled by Hailer uh, Skull later in the game, because the logic is if you do have a Mimic Beacon like the Hailer Skull, you don't even need to heal. So I would say the Hailer Skull is a stronger version of the Medikai Skull, and you don't need both in the same, uh, in the same team. And then finally, 
from my end a very strong item is the disruptor skull uh, the highest uh, level has six points of damage armor pierce and does disruption disruption will help you against a lot of the bigger enemies will um, disable their autos and it's the best way of dealing with overwatch in the entire game period so uh, whilst i was playing through the game i always had a disruptor skull and uh, when it was available i always had a hailer skull when i could afford it i used an extractor skull as well so those were my go-to uh, skulls and i can very much recommend them in terms of equipment uh, so uh, just so that you have seen it as well there are a couple of very end game items uh, like the artisan uh, matrix with uh, three additional armor or extra range but you really don't need those too much for melee characters i have two items that i recommend to you which is the liber Demo uh, democonicon which gives crit damage and the uh, ojorium scrolls which give um, melee attack damage so those two are good for ranged characters the equivalent are blast greaves 35 percent crit chance and enhance auto senses for crit damage and 90 percent of the time you put these on your damage dealers the uh, characters with Will point needs will um, very likely go for sacred incense. I think potentially the best um, single um, item that or uh, passive item in in the game because you can almost always use willpower. Uh, then another honorable mention, Sanctum Shard, 50% uh, focus can be uh, super helpful because a lot of the abilities trigger 50% of the time, and this will make it 100% sure couple of niche items uh, there one extended magazine can be good for certain guns if you don't have uh, if you don't want to reload or for um, uh, the arcane weapon build uh, the emblem pauldron can be good for uh, using that together with uh, highly injured characters where you don't want to deal with a minus 10 hit points because this is almost completely offsetting uh, it uh, but it, since you're not taking a lot of damage if you're playing it the right way uh, I would potentially not go for it and then finally uh, the urgence of warding with 50 percent resistance which is also a good item resistance is very hard to get by and this is an easy way for kind of tankyish combinations to make sure that you are uh, being able to stand in the front line and that's really it uh, for the equipment guide and uh, the stratagems took a little bit longer than expected but there is a lot to unpack i hope that gives you a very solid um, or, guide to guide you through all of the equipment if you took value from it leave a comment down below and let me know um, whether or not you want other guide videos take care have a good one and bye bye